You're shown an image of a jar full of coins. Now, the image in the quiz is just kind of a visual to get your brain thinking and trying to co connect and relate and be able to do the story problem. So you are asked to find out, number one, what, when you see this jar, what's the first thing that comes to mind? What are some questions you have? Well, for me, I'm like, well, how much is in there? That's, that's the money deal. Um, so then the second question is, well, what, what do you need to know in order to find out how much is in there? Well, I need to know how many of each type of coin is in there. So then it starts to give you uh, some guidelines, some parameters so that you can start trying to come up with an estimate or at least a, a conclusion of how much money is in there. So it says that there are a total of 190 coins and there's only pennies, nickels, and dimes. So come up with uh, some estimates of what you think might be the set of values. So at this point, you can come up with anything. All that matters is that your coin total adds up to 190. So I need to make 190 out of, let's say, 50 dimes, 50 nickels, and 90 pennies. And I just made that up. It really doesn't matter. You could have anything. It doesn't matter. We don't have enough information to come up with anything more substantial than something like this. So then the next tip that it gives you is uh, there are twice as many nickels as there are dimes. Okay. Well, I didn't set it up that way. So I can rearrange some values if I want, so I'm more meeting those parameters a little bit better. So I can maybe go, well, all right, let's say I have 25 dimes, 50 nickels, and then I add the 25 to the 90, 15. Let me just double check. Five, one, and five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, I did do it. Woohoo! Uh, pennies. Okay, so now I have 190 coins made up of three different values, and I have twice as many nickels as I do dimes. So, so far, I'm, this fits that model. Then the last thing was that there are 40 more pennies than nickels. Okay, 40 more pennies. Well, that didn't meet that. You could trial and error. I'm a little overwhelmed by the trial and error method, so I need to come up with something a little more concrete for me. So I now know some baseline values and how they relate to one another, okay? And instead of trying to have three different variables, the, the dimes, pennies, nickels, let's just make them all based off one baseline value. So we'll make D for the number of dimes. And I know that there are twice as many dime, uh, twice as many nickels as there are dimes. Okay, and then I know that there are forty more pennies than there are dimes or nickels. Oops. Okay, two D plus forty gives us what our pennies are worth. Okay. And I know that if I add all of these quantities up, they equal 190. So I'm going to make an equation out of that. D plus 2D plus 2D plus 40. And just so that I know 1 coin, 2 coin, 3 coin, I use the parentheses there, it doesn't really change any value, equals 190. Now I can start solving for D. I combine my like terms. D, two of them, another two, that gives me 5D plus 40 equals 190. I take my 40 away to get 5D equals 150. And when I divide both sides by 5, I get 30. So the number of dimes I have is 30. The number of nickels I have is twice that, so I have 60. And the number of pennies I have is the number of nickels plus 40, so I get 100. And this is the solution to our jars. So this is a really great skill. Uh, when you have more than one unknown, set those unknowns up in terms of one baseline variable. So you're only trying to solve for one variable and then do the regular mathematical operations from there.